Stephen Donnelly. When healthcare is discussed in politics and in the media, the focus is almost exclusively on what's going wrong. The numbers waiting to see doctors are for treatment, the numbers lying on trolleys in emergency departments, the numbers unable to get access to mental health supports, government responses to crises being all talk and no action. The patients, their families, their friends are exhausted. Many conclude that nothing can be done, that the problems they are seeing are normal and inevitable. Sure, isn't that just how health care is, you hear asked quite regularly. And as we look, Minister, to 2019, it's essential that we challenge this conclusion and that we demand better. These failures, these waiting lists, these cost overruns, they're not inevitable. They don't exist in other countries like they do here. They haven't existed in the past in Ireland like they do now, and there's no reason for them to exist in the future. In the noughties, for example, incredible progress was made. The nursing degree was introduced and the number of nursing student posts was doubled. The smoking ban was introduced. Healthcare investment grew very substantially. 53 separate healthcare bodies were consolidated into one. The national screening services were launched. 1,600 additional hospital beds were added. The number of consultant posts grew by 40%. The Health Information and Quality Authority was established. There was a massive increase in home care. The National Cancer Strategy was rolled out, and so on and so forth. And these initiatives supported our healthcare professionals in making really extraordinary progress in patient care in Ireland. Waiting times fell from years to months and to weeks. Death uh, from cancer is down by 11% in the last 10 years. Deaths from stroke fell in that time by one third. De uh, infant mortality fell by a third. Cardiovascular disease fell 40%. Deaths from heart attacks fell by a half. Three in every four eligible women in the country were screened for breast cancer. These are amazing uh, accomplishments, and the credit doesn't go to any political party in here, it goes to our, our healthcare clinicians who, had, who, who did and were able to do and were supported in doing an extraordinary job. Now, we have some of the best trained healthcare professionals anywhere in the world, and they provide an outstanding level of care. They mind us and they heal us and they save our lives every day. And they've made and continue to make incredible progress in terms of improving patient care uh, in Ireland. So, so what is the problem? Why is the focus? Why are there so many negative things that, that we focus on in here, that the media focus on, that patients focus on? We've one of the highest healthcare spends anywhere in the world. And in spite of this, somehow, we also have one of the lowest numbers of hospital beds in Europe. We have the lowest number of consultants per person in Europe. And we have the longest waiting lists. Now, during the noughties, waiting lists were brought down from years to months. But now, in spite of billions, many billions in additional funding per year, uh, those waiting lists have gone back up from months to years. The waiting times are longer than they have ever been since we started recording the times. Children with special needs in some, part of the country, some parts of the country wait three and a half years for treatment. 35,000 people are waiting more than six months for a hospital appointment. It was less than one-third of that in 2010. More than 3,000 children across the country are waiting for a mental health appointment. The number of people on trolleys and emergency departments hit 10,000 for the first time in our history last year. And the total list of people waiting, if you add up the list for those waiting for appointments and therapy and diagnostics and mental health supports, you get to over a million. It topped a million by about September of last year. Nothing like that has ever been seen before, and nothing like that exists in any other European country. Um, in terms of inpatients, there's 72,000 people waiting for uh, hospital treatment. And for those waiting over a year, for every one person who was waiting in 2010, when there was much less money than there is today, for every one person who was waiting, there are now 16 people waiting. That's how bad it has got. Um, we compared it to the UK, and what we found was that, that comparing populations, accounting for population size, for every one person waiting here, or rather for every one person waiting in the UK per capita, there are 200 people waiting here more than a year. We are 200 times worse than the UK in getting people treatment uh, before a year. 
In terms of outpatients, the current number of people, the current outpatient list is over half a million, and the number waiting more than a year is over 150,000. So that would fill the Aviva Stadium three times over. And this list just goes on and on and on. Now, the one exception to this trend is where the National Treatment Purchase Fund has been deployed. And the government, and I don't blame them for it, uh, will regularly talk about the improvements that have been made, but they are targeted. What the government doesn't say, of course, is that the NTPF was, it came about because of the Confidence and Supply Agreement, and it's something that they resisted and continue to resist for years. General practice is on its knees. Nurses and midwives are looking at a national strike for only the second time in a hundred years. There is an unprecedented recruitment crisis in terms of hospital consultants. Mental health services are literally falling apart in many parts of the country. Health overruns are now consistently over 600 million euro a year. Never happened before. The National Children's Hospital is an interesting case study. So the National Children's Hospital, as we know, was meant to cost less than 500 million euro. Now the latest figure we have is over 1.7 billion. So uh, back in December, the Taoiseach told us it had gone up to 1.4 billion. We've gone up 300 million in the three or four weeks since he gave us that figure. Now, how expensive is that? The most expensive hospital ever built anywhere in the world is the new Royal Adelaide Hospital. And it cost about one and a half billion euro. And it has 800 beds. So the children's hospital is going to cost significantly more than the most expensive hospital ever built anywhere in the world. And it will have a little over half the beds. So here's what that means. That means that when the National Children's Hospital is built, the Irish people will have paid about twice per bed of the most expensive hospital built anywhere in the world. Now, that requires a staggering level of incompetence to pull off, a staggering level of systems failures to, uh, to happen. So what's going on? How is Ireland spending more public money than ever before on healthcare, more than most countries on earth, and at the same time, we're suffering from the longest waiting lists in Europe, the longest waiting lists we've ever had, and, and this series of enormous overspends. How is this happening? How is so much valuable money being wasted so badly? Now, much of the blame rests with actions this government has taken or hasn't taken since 2011. They've managed to alienate pretty much the entire healthcare workforce, the GPs, the consultants, the NHCDs, the therapists, the nurses, the midwives, they seem to have alienated pretty much everybody. And implementation of new initiatives has been incredibly poor, like the National Children's Hospital and controlling costs. And of course, they have wrought organisational chaos on the system. In 2011, they announced that the HSE was going to be scrapped. And they said that healthcare in, in Ireland in the future would be funded by universal health insurance. That was the big idea. And in 2012, in front of all the national cameras, uh, they disbanded the HSE board and marched the board out publicly in front of the cameras for everyone to watch on the news that evening. In 2014, they reiterated that they would disband the HSC, but they gave a date. So then Minister Varadkar said by 2020, the HSC would be gone, but they had no idea what they were going to replace it with. In 2016, uh, they said, well, actually, the HSC will not now be abolished. Uh, and actually, this universal health insurance model of funding everything, yeah, we're not doing that either. And it was an Oireachtas committee that has come up with the only long-term strategy. It wasn't a government strategy, it was an Oireachtas strategy, which was launch care, which may have various flaws on it, but it's the only game in town. And as a, as a vision document, it's, it's pretty good and it's pretty ambitious. And it was Slauncher Care that said, you've got to put the board back in. This, was, this, was, this bill before us tonight was not a government initiative. The government didn't, didn't wake up and say, actually, do you remember when we marched the board of the HSC out and destroyed governance in our healthcare system? Maybe we shouldn't have done that. Maybe we should bring the board back in. That's not what the government did. The Oireachtas, this house reported back and said, the biggest, most important, most complicated, and most expensive system in our country needs a board. Um, Self-evidently, 
Now, Sloucher Care, unfortunately, um, every single implementation deadline has been missed so far on Sloucher Care. And Budget 2019, by my reckoning, allocated in real terms about 20 million euro for Sloucher Care. So the government said on the day there's 200 million in here for Sloucher Care, but actually it wasn't. There's 200 million of various initiatives, and the government said, well, all of these initiatives are Sloucher Care, but actually they weren't. They were just business as usual and scaling up and doing a bunch of sensible things. The actual money for Sloucher Care was about 20 million. Sloucher Care itself figures it needs about a billion, and conservatively, you could probably get it off the ground for about half a billion in any, in any given year. You could probably make some progress. So for every one euro the government attributed to Sloucher Care for this year, um, Sloucher Care probably needs 25 to 50 euro. So that's, that's how serious uh, Sloucher Care is being taken. Now, when the ex-director general of the HSC, Tony O'Brien, appeared before various Iraqis committees last year, in the heat of the cervical check scandal. Um, he made the following point repeatedly, because he was under a lot of pressure from various members of this house, not just on cervical check, but on the performance of the HSC and on these waiting lists. And he made the following point, Ken Corley. He said repeatedly, look, he was hired by this government in 2011 or 2012, whichever year it was, and his instruction was that he was being hired and his job was to dismantle the HSE. That's what he was told his job was. And he said, on that point, he never received any further instructions. And he was told the future funding would be universal health insurance, and he never received any further instructions. Um, the Scali report pointed out the implications of the lack of a board. And the Scali report directly linked the lack of proper governance in a HSE board to what happened with the catastrophic uh, governance failures in cervical check. So getting rid of the board was not just a mistake. It was an extraordinary mistake. Hiring a guy in and saying, your job is to dismantle the HSE, but we've taken your board away um, and we're not going to give you any further instructions on the HSE was an extraordinary mistake. What has it led to? It has led to massive cost overruns. See, what is it last year, 700, 750 million? Nothing like that has ever happened before. The spending overruns on the Ch National Children's Hospital are unlike any healthcare project that has probably happened anywhere in the world, based on the fact that we're going to pay twice as much per bed as the most expensive hospital um, ever built. And I would argue that the lack of a board, coupled with this organisational chaos, um, goes a long way to explaining how the same managers with the same doctors and the same nurses and the same healthcare professionals, but with way more money, um, are providing a service that's much, much more difficult to access. It shouldn't be more difficult to access. The same doctors and the same nurses and the same managers, given way more money, should be able to provide a more accessible service. But there has been this chaos wrought throughout the HSE. So the bill takes one small but important step to reversing that damage. It reinstates uh, the board, and obviously uh, we will, I will, Fianna Fáil will be um, supporting it. But I'll finish in this, Ken Corla. We should be under no illusion as we face into 2019 as to the scale of the challenge before us. Organisational stability was lost. It has been lost in the HSE. It has to be re-established. Financial control has been completely lost. In terms of financial control, the HSE is on fire. It has been completely lost. It must be re-established. And thirdly, our healthcare professionals, our nurses and midwives, our doctors, our dentists, the list goes on, they must be engaged with. They have been systematically alienated. They are not being engaged with. The government is due to announce a new oral health strategy in about two or three weeks' time. And the Irish Dentists Association wrote in the papers yesterday that the dentists haven't been consulted on the upcoming oral health strategy. Like, that's where we're at. Th this has to stop. We have to have a culture within the HSC and within the department and within this house where we actively engage with and listen to and respect and properly treat our clinicians because that has not been happening. If we can do that, if we can, if we can stabilise the organisation and we can somehow get control of funding and, and financing, which is spiralled completely out of control, and if we can begin to understand that the people who actually lead our healthcare system are the clinicians and listen to them and engage with them and respect them, then we can start rebuilding the healthcare system 
that our patients and our public and our clinicians and everyone working throughout the HSE deserves. Thank you. Thank you.